My name's Adrian Glover. I'm a research scientist in the Life Sciences Department here at the Natural History Museum. Uh, we've been working uh, recently studying the Antarctic Ocean surrounding Antarctica, an incredible place where we know almost nothing about the marine biology of the animals living on the seafloor around the Antarctic. It's a land of, of ice. It's a land dominated by processes of the formation of sea ice and of the ice shelves which stretch out often over the Antarctic Ocean in places like the Weddell Sea where we were just working recently on an amazing expedition together with the British Antarctic Survey to study, well our goal was to study a place called the, the Larsen Sea Ice Shelf. This is where last July uh, an iceberg, an enormous iceberg, one of the largest icebergs ever to break up, uh, drifted away from that ice shelf of this general process of the collapse of the ice shelves around Antarctica and we our goal of the expedition was to be the first people to study the life underneath that ice shelf and to get down there but it was an enormous challenge and actually remarkable uh, experience of trying to get there we didn't quite get to where we wanted to get to uh, we actually in the end worked a little bit further north we we spent uh, a week pushing ourselves through a place called the Weddell Sea infamous and difficult sea to navigate. It's famous really because it's very cold temperatures, the sea ice is very heavy and thick there and that's exactly what we found uh, going south in the James Clark Ross, the, the British Antarctic Survey ship. We pushed for a week, as I said, through this uh, thick sea ice. Eventually we couldn't go any further. Uh, just like Shackleton back in 1912 when he tried to push down into the Weddell Sea on the first attempt at a trans-Antarctic expedition. It's amazing how sometimes things haven't changed that much despite modern technology. When you're faced with uh, nature and low temperatures and difficult sea ice conditions, there's really nothing that you can do. Even a very powerful icebreaker, much more powerful than the one that we have, we wouldn't have been able to get any further south. Uh, so we stopped our futile attempt to get to the Larsen Sea and worked in an area a little bit to the north, which is also a completely undiscovered ecosystem, a place where an ice shelf had broken away in 1995. Uh, called the Larsen A ice shelf and we worked there and we, we sampled uh, the seafloor there down to depths of one and a half thousand meters. It's incredibly deep, the Antarctic shelf ecosystem, so the, the ocean just around the Antarctic is much deeper than you normally expect around continents. And we were working there in a place called the Prince Gustav Channel, a really remarkable place. It's very very difficult and to work in temperatures uh, below minus ten. Uh, suddenly the sea freezes around the boat, so you have this almost sea ice all around the vessel. And also working on the back deck, it's extremely cold, you've got minus 40 degrees wind chill. And of course this is the Antarctic summer, uh, this, is, <laughs> this is supposed to be the nice time of year. And we are there trying to take marine biological samples, uh, sieve samples with seawater, and of course the seawater just froze immediately coming out of the hoses onto the back deck. Uh, so it's a huge challenge. Uh, but incredibly beautiful uh, and really sort of bringing home to us the, the, the incredible nature of Antarctica, this sort of land of ice and a, a huge continent, but also a land of, of amazing biological diversity as well. You can get algae forming in that sea ice, and actually one of the, the sources of the, 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 the richness of the Antarctic marine ecosystem is that algae that grows in the sea ice, so though it's a harsh and seemingly forbidding environment is actually one that's quite conducive to, to life actually and we saw that when we sampled the deep ocean uh, and took these samples for the first time collecting animals that we'd never seen before species new to science so I'm really excited to look and see what that means what the data will show in the sense of how quickly animals have been able to recolonize that habitat since the ice shelf collapsed and perhaps most importantly what that tells us about when that process happened